Chemical Kinetics, Part 2, Determining and Using Rate Laws. In this video, you'll learn how to determine and write rate laws for chemical reactions. One way you will learn to do this is called the initial rate method. Let us start with an example, the decomposition of dinitrogen pentoxide into nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. The concentration of reactant was measured over time during the course of the reaction and we can plot the data like so. With this graph, we see that the rate of disappearance of reactant, that is the slope of the graph, changes over time. If we compare the slopes at different concentrations, we can infer the order of the rate law with respect to dinitrogen pentoxide. At this first labeled point on the graph, the concentration of reactant is 0 0.90 molar and the slope of the tangent line at that point is determined to be 5.4 times 10 to the negative fourth power moles per liter per second. At the second labeled point on the graph, when the concentration is halved to 0.45 molar, the slope of the tangent line at this point is 2.7 times 10 to the negative fourth power moles per liter per second. This is half the slope from the previous point. So whenever the concentration is halved, the rate is also halved. That means that the rate depends on the concentration of dinitrogen pentoxide to the first power. So the rate law for this reaction is first order with respect to dinitrogen pentoxide. We can write the rate law as the rate of disappearance of dinitrogen pentoxide equals the rate constant K times the molar concentration of dinitrogen pentoxide to the first power. First order rate laws are easy to recognize because at twice the concentration of reactant you get twice the rate of the reaction. Or at three or four times the concentration you get three or four times the rate respectively. Here's a generic version of the first order rate law for a reaction in which some generic reactant A reacts to form products. Let's take a look at the generic versions for two other types of rate laws. Here's the second order generic rate law. This form of the rate law is what you get if the order of reactant A was 2. You would recognize a second order reaction because the rate would depend on the molar concentration of A squared. So doubling the concentration would quadruple the rate, or tripling the concentration would get you 9 times the previous rate of the reaction. Here's a generic form for another common rate law, the zero order rate law. If the power of the concentration is zero, then the rate of the reaction is equal to a constant. If a reaction is zero order with respect to A, then the concentration of A does not affect the rate of the reaction at all. Now that you have some familiarity with rate laws, let's look at a method commonly used to experimentally determine the rate law and the rate constant for a reaction with more than just one reactant. It's called the method of initial rates, or the initial rates method. To use this method, we need to look at data from several experiments with differing initial concentrations at the same temperature. The initial rate of each experiment can be compared in order to calculate the order for the reactants. Here is our example, the reaction of ammonium and nitrite to form nitrogen and water. To get us started, the rate law can be written as the rate of disappearance of ammonium ion set equal to K times the molar concentration of ammonium to the n power times the molar concentration of nitrite to the m power. We can determine the values of n and m by comparing the rates of experiments in which one reactant concentration is changed while the other remains constant. Then we can substitute in the rates, the concentrations, and the orders so that we can find the average value for k at this particular temperature. So here's the data from three experiments at the same temperature which the initial concentrations of ammonium and, and nitrite uh, were recorded and the initial rate of the reaction was also recorded. Now here's our generic rate law. Remember this is for the rate of disappearance of ammonium. If we look at the first two experiments, experiment one and experiment two, you see that there is no change in the concentration of ammonium used. 
but between experiment one and experiment two, we have a doubling of the concentration of nitrite. What does that do to the rate? Well, if we look at these two rates, we see that from experiment one to experiment two, we also have a doubling of the rate, the initial rate of the reaction. That means that the value of M in this rate law is 1. It is first order with respect to nitrite because doubling the nitrite concentration doubles the rate. Well, if we look at experiment numbers 2 and 3, we see that there's no change in the nitrite concentration, but we have a doubling between experiment 2 and experiment 3. We have double the concentration, the initial concentration of ammonium used. What does that do to the rate? Well, over here, we see that from experiment 2 to experiment 3, where you doubled the ammonium concentration, we get a doubling of the rate of the reaction from 2.7 times 10 to the negative 7th to 5.40 times 10 to the negative 7th. That means that for this reaction, it is also first order with respect to ammonium. We could then rewrite the entire rate law as the rate of the reaction is equal to the rate of disappearance of ammonium change in ammonium concentration over change in time is equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of ammonium times the concentration of nitrite. We say that this is first order with respect to ammonium and first order with respect to nitrite. Now if we add those two exponents, one and one, we get two. So this reaction is second order overall. So we could say that overall it's second order. So now we should ask ourselves with this data, what's the value of K? Well, we've got three experiments with three concentrations, initial concentrations of reactants, and three rates. We can just substitute in everything we know and solve for K. And that's just what we'll do here. Let's look at experiment one. For experiment one, the initial concentration of ammonium, 0 0.100 molar, and the initial concentration of nitrite, 0 0.0050 molar, can be substituted in and set equal to the rate of that reaction, which was measured 1.35 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter per second. When we substitute all that in, we'll get an expression that looks like this. Now we just need to divide both sides of the equation by these concentrations, 0 0.100 molar and 0 0.0050 molar. And it'll allow us to cancel out everything with the K and we'll get our value for K. Pay attention to units when you solve for K. Uh, we see that one of the moles per liter cancels, but the other one does not. Now we can put this in our calculator, do some dimensional analysis, and determine the value in units for K. After doing the calculation, we see that K is equal to 2.7 times 10 to the negative fourth uh, per molar per second. Uh, do the same thing with experiments two and experiment three. We'll actually, in this case, get the same value for K. It'd be easy to average then and see that the average value for K for these three experiments is this 2.7 times 10 to the negative fourth per molar per second. We can then take that K value and substitute it into the rate law and get a complete expression for the rate law. Here's our value for K in the rate law. Now remember earlier we determined that this reaction was first order with respect to ammonium ion, so the concentration, the molar concentration raised to the first power, times also first order with respect to nitrite. If I can squeeze it in here. And there we have our complete expression for the rate law, which was determined using the initial rate method. In this video, we've looked at some methods for determining and using 
rate laws to study the kinetics of a chemical reaction. If you want to review this material, be sure to watch this video again and consult the appropriate pages in your textbook. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks.